comes of the challenge. Okay. The recording has started uh, sharing my screen and then we get started. So yeah, as I told you do, during the last guest talk, uh, most of uh, the next career session, they are just going to be building our behaviors. Um, of course, it's going to be related to workplace scenarios, but that comes back to not what we have to do, but the kind of behaviors we should be developing. And then that, that's going to be for February and then early March. And then starting from late March to the end of the training, we'll be doing talent readiness sessions, everything around CVs, everything around um, interview rehearsals and tricks and everything that will help us land our dream jobs as fast as possible. So with the behaviors, but let's start. An interesting thing about procrastination. I believe everyone knows the meaning of procrastination. Like it's not your first time hearing it and probably you even do it. Like we all do it actually. It's a human thing. I am not sure why everyone can relate from the old to the young people. Everyone can relate with this. And uh, I don't know, probably it's part of our nature. So let's find out. Uh, so procrastinators, gather here, please. <laughs> if you have ever procrastinated, which I believe you did, give me some reactions. So like, can you relate? Can you gather here as well? <laughs> Shamelessly. Like, yeah, give this a reaction. Okay. Okay, I'm loving this. I'm I'm happy that we can all relate. We probably even do it at Ted Academy. I'm I'm no lying. Even me myself, sometimes I find myself procrastinating with my obligations. So let's see different views of how we see procrastination. So in the traditional view, in the traditional view, uh, procrastination has been seen as laziness and core planning and lack of discipline, you know? And what the solutions have we been taking? You know, better time management techniques like to-do list and calendars, like the technical things, because we've always felt bad and felt so lazy simply because we think this is a very wrong thing to do. But what is the view today? Procrastination today, we often see it as related to our emotions. So it's most of the time the root from our negative emotions associated with any task, boredom, fear of failure, being overwhelmed, being a perfectionist, you know. So we end up putting things off to avoid feeling those kind of emotions and not because we can't manage our time so before definitely it was about our lack of discipline you know we were so harsh about it but in the world today we see it associated with the emotions our simple emotions i will dive into uh deeper into that into the emotions part as we go through the slides but let's see i want to hear from you uh, like two to three people, if you can unmute yourself and tell us that you can proudly say that there is this one week at 10 Academy where you felt like you are a proud citizen of procrastination. Tell us, like you really procrastinated almost everything. You ended up submitting late submissions or it's even worked for you. We, we don't know. Just tell us. Can you share us that kind of story? Anyone? Anyone? It's not a negative thing. It's not a negative thing because even for me, I will share with you. I will share with you my procrastination story. Okay, Fenuel, how about you actually share with us uh, like what week at an academy did you find yourself procrastinating a lot? What were the reason behind and what were the results? Uh, for uh, for being late, I was joining with my. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so the I think the one I remember is right after week zero, since week zero was uh, you know hectic and we had to deliver every day and stuff. And after that, when week one happened, and I was told that the deliverables were I two or three a week, and I was like, well, I can do this since uh, I went past week zero. <laughs> well, I found out the hard way that it really worked that way, so that was the one thing that I focused on it that, that I remember from this experience, yeah. You are muted. Oh, <laughs> I just realized that. So yeah, I was saying, yes, I think many of that can relate from giving us uh, ourselves some excuses that, you know, we can do it on the very last minute. You know, totally understandable. Actually, uh, yeah, let's proceed. Thank you for sharing, Fenuel. So most of the time, uh, why is procrastination about managing emotions and specifically not time? For instance, Fenuel said, oh, I felt like I can do it. That's an emotion. It's not like he didn't have time to do it. You know, th that was specific, very, very straight. So why is in the world today procrastination seen as managing emotions and not specifically time? Let's break through it. Most of the time, these are the four key things. There are so many, so many things related to emotions and versus procrastinations but these are the major four things that i've been finding everywhere and i also can i can relate first of all the fear of fail the fear of fail we might delay a task because we think um we do it poorly so we are trying to escape that thought of uh that thought that is making us believe that we are going to be failing at this task so we keep delaying the task because we do not want to feel this kind of sting of failure and number two is the overwhelm this is when you have a large complex task and you feel daunting leading us to feel to, to put it off you know everything is so much for you regarding this certain task or regarding this uh a uh, sudden assignment that you have to be doing and you feel so overwhelmed and you don't know where to start you don't know how to proceed like you are so you are so lost so you end up feeling like oh let me put it off probably relax for a moment watch some movie or listen to some music or even take a nap so that i can put myself together after and get to focus on this you know so the feeling of overwhelm and then also number three is the most common thing, boredom. You know, we find some of the tasks more uninteresting and that's how we tend to procrastinate on it. For instance, what kind of example can I give you? But yeah, I believe there is this kind of time, even at 10 Academy, where you feel like, oh, you know, th this is not really a subject that is interesting you because we are receiving so many, so many technical and non-technical courses. And you feel like, uh, you know, probably you have a different thought about it. And you feel like working on it is going to feel boring to you at the moment. So you'll be like, oh, let me pause it for now. Probably I will work it on Saturday or on Friday when I feel like um, having the same energy or some good energy to work on it this time and number four is perfection perfectionist it, 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 especially to those people who take their work um that that was supposed to say it, it to be submitted let's say on saturday and you have received it on monday but you feel like you are not kind of satisfied with the work you are putting in with the outputs you are getting so you keep procrastinating the submission you know, when you probably would have submitted, let's say on Wednesday, but you keep procrastinating the submission until the very last deadline on Saturday, because that's when you feel like you wanted to give it your all, 
you wanted to invest all the knowledge, you wanted to research more, you wanted to put in more outputs, like you are a perfectionist. You did not see it as a complete work before. And this is why you are focusing on, um, you, you, you know, you are focusing on even the smallest, smallest details just to make it so perfect. So we have these four, fear of failure, being overwhelmed, and of feeling the boredom or you are a perfectionist and so that's why you end up uh procrastinating things but some people are going to say that some of the things are lacking and these are the two of them most of the time we tell ourselves that we are too busy i will speak on perspective of the uh previous career session you had with arun when you were giving him your reasons behind how much you do not spend so much time on career session and everyone said most of the time i feel like i'm too busy you know i'm too busy with the technical part and i feel like that's what makes sense more much more here at ten academy those are the knowledge actually i want career session i feel like they are the supplement of the knowledge i'm getting here so that's why i tend to not focus so much on it so we tend to give ourselves excuses like i'm too busy to work on this but probably some of the time you even have free time on uh, that you can use to focus on other ass assessments that are not technical. But this is an excuse we give ourselves. Look, it's even in the daily life when you are procrastinating something that you were supposed to be doing today. Let's say you were supposed to be doing laundry and um, you tell yourself that you are too busy, but probably your schedule is not that too busy you will even end up some, spending some time just chilling on your phone uh, instead of doing your laundry. But you will keep convincing yourself that you were too busy with 10 Academy trainings that are ongoing. But, you know, I believe everyone can relate. And then number two is the stubbornness or pride. Pride, the, feel, the feeling of telling ourselves that like, oh, I can do it. I can do it on the very last minute. Like uh, like how Finuel was saying, like I, I, he believed he can do it, you know, like it's not a big deal. I can do it on the very last time. So he keeps procrastinating. This is something we can all relate to. We all have this, I'm telling you. So one time in a year or two, time, two, two times in a year, we, we tend to have this kind of thing where we feel like some tasks are too easy for you to focus on them on the very last minute. So yeah how do i avoid procrastination myself this is something i started working on especially starting last year because uh like way before into 2022 2021 i was the biggest procrastinator I, like i i would even procrastinate some um catch-up meeting we have we are going to be having because I'm, i feel like i don't know what conversation are we going to be having when we jump on that coffee catch-up so and i end up I, you i would end up giving you an excuse that oh something came up but to be honest i'm home i'm home i'm scrolling on TikTok or instagram but because i feel like mm -mm, my mind is not there my mind is not ready to be catching going on that coffee catch up and probably it was even a big deal but i would procrastinate it so i used to feel so bad about it so i started working on it starting last year so here's how i did i combined the two i, I combined the traditional part and also um the traditional view and then the modern view the traditional view says it's time management and this really plays a bigger role so i started focusing on prioritization prioritization waking up and it's sunday for instance i plan my day i, I plan my week how monday to fridays are going to look like and do i have any kind of friends meetings or any kind of gatherings i need to be attending in the weekends like i'll put everything on my calendar when you see my personal email calendar you will be shocked it's always full because i put everything there from my work here at 10 academy starts by saying oh on sunday i have to prepare my uh, tutorials so that on monday everything is ready i have to do the grading this and that on wednesday like everything is there and also in the weekends if there is a family gathering that i need to go to or friendship meetings everything is there so most of the time when you even tell, give me like a last minute kind of 
invites i'm not going to be attending because unless i have a free spot in my calendar but yeah i started putting everything there and focusing also on the important task first that's what i mean by prioritization i focused on important task first what what do i mean here uh my work comes first and myself comes first so everything goes behind those two they come last so i do prioritization so even in the different tasks i'm uh, i'm supposed to be doing for instance um in the careers team we do a lot of things so instead of me focusing let's say on starting grading today when i have a career session to deliver today when i have to go through my slides to understand what i should be doing i'm not going to be procrastinating reviewing my slides because I will be lost when I come here and I don't know what I'm coming to say, I will be lost. Even though grading was like, uh, was on the deadline, I'm going to be prioritizing this, the slides, and then grading can come last. So prioritization. Number two, planning and scheduling. This, that's where I was talking about my calendars um, and any planners. Most of the time I, I use Google Task very very helpful so i also recommend it google task it helped me align everything i need to be doing especially on a daily basis and then also time boxing what did i mean by time boxing this is where you allocate specific time slots for tasks to avoid over promising or even feeling overwhelmed so i also don't uh, overwhelm my schedule like you find it very full uh one hour for instance, the session is going to be taking one hour. Like, oh, I have break, like breaks in the middle of my tasks between this session and to another task that I have to be doing after the session. I put in some time, you know, so that I avoid uh, feeling so overwhelmed because my calendar is super loaded. So time boxing, you have to be allocating different tasks um at different time slots in the middle of your tasks so that you avoid feeling overwhelmed at the end of the day and then number four i eliminate distractions our phones social medias i know this this is a kind of a very big distraction to majority of the people especially the people who are so much into social medias into looking for updates this is a big distraction. Social media used to be a very big distraction to me to back in time. But nowadays I've managed on when I have to use my phone and for what reasons. And when do I ha actually have to be having it with me? Because most of the time when I'm focusing on something, then I leave it somewhere that I'm not looking at it at all. You know, so avoiding any kind of distraction. So, you know, any other interruptions. And then number last, which is batching similar tasks. Most of the time I group similar tasks together for improved efficiency. Like when I'm designing my challenges, okay, like to give you a glimpse of how we prepare all these, when I'm designing the challenges that we have to be working on, let's say in the next four weeks, I do it at the same time with designing rubrics because also rubrics take so much time to go into detail. It's like you are designing your marking sheet, you know? You imagine it's like you are a teacher and you have to be having a marking sheet for your exam. So yeah, I combine those kind of two tasks because they always go the same, you know, at the same time. I, they, 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 they are not supposed to go at the same time, but they have kind of similar contents and I need one to complete another one. So I put them into just groups, you know, so that I won't end up feeling so overwhelmed after drafting my challenges. And I feel like I'm putting rubrics tomorrow because it's also another lot of work. Mm -mm. I put them in batch and then do them at the same time. So how do I navigate mind management now? The number one, one, <laughs> number one thing is identifying emotional triggers. What do I mean here? I always recognize specific emotions that lead to procrastination. Is it fear? Is it overwhelm? Uh, why do I talk? Of, why do I keep talking about the fear of failure, or even having the fear only? This comes most of the time when uh, 
for instance, I'm doing my researches about a certain task I have to do, and I'm not getting the right information I need for that specific task. So that always creates the fear in me, and I end up keeping procrastinating things. And also, number two, the challenging negative thoughts, especially when it comes to self doubts this happens to perfectionists most of the time so you you always doubt yourself like is this, this the right work i'm supposed to be doing you know so i always challenge those kind of negative thoughts i just do my work do my evaluation after if i need to get some someone else's validation i share it with them for their review and done not, no, th there is nothing good into self doubt into adapting if your work is complete and if your work is um, uh, as part of the standard should be on. No, avoid the self doubts challenge those negative thoughts and do what you have to do to read your work and that will be it. And also budget, building self comparison. Uh, this is something I've been working on. Uh, also starting last year, um, I used to not focus on the progress of things. I used to always focus on the outcomes I'm looking for and I would end up, like I'm comparing where I am with the outcomes I want to get. And most of the time it's a long journey to get there. And I end up feeling so overwhelmed. I, I end up questioning myself, like, why am I doing this? You know, can I stop and, uh, just leave and that's how you end up closing your laptop and you're like, you know, uh, let me take some time to breathe and actually do not need that kind of time to breathe. It's only because you have that kind of negative thought where you are comparing yourself with the achievement you want to see, you know. So always, always, I, I avoid that. I avoid uh, looking at the bigger picture. I always focus on the smallest, smallest steps uh, that I need to be taking to get there. Number four, mindfulness and relaxation techniques. This is where meditation comes in. I do not think many people would do not do meditation. I myself, I always fail at doing, concentrating at meditation, but it's a process I'm learning. I'm learning. So, uh, but when you find yourself into the kind of situation where you have to procrastinate an important work, like you are not feeling like you are focused, practice different things, like relax. You relax yourself for a moment, breathe in, breathe out, you know, or do any other exercise to manage that stress or to manage that anxiety. You can hit the gym and come back. So all those kind of small, small techniques you can do to practice mindfulness, especially when you're in the middle of an important task, but you feel like you are not energetic enough to complete it. Yeah, just hit the gym or do any relaxation exercise you want to do. Or if you are a meditator, then do it. Then also rewarding the progress. If you, like now I'm practicing to be reading books, it's something I really want to develop myself, but reading books is not an easy task. It's not an easy commitment, I'm telling you. So all the time when I wake up and I've took my time to read just for 30 minutes, I'm telling you, I, I, I'd be like, today I'm buying some something for myself because, hmm, this is an achievement. This is a very huge achievement. And of course I do. I really celebrate my small achievements and it's something, and I also believe most of you also do. Uh, that's why I always uh, be like, uh, especially on Fridays or on Mondays, I'm always excited because Friday means we have completed something at the end of the week and Monday means we are progressing another week into our training journey and that's why i'm always so hyped telling you oh uh, i hope you are celebrating yourself i hope you are happy that it's another week we are starting i hope you are really grateful that it's friday and you've managed to go through this journey you know why because i want us to be rewarding this progress it's another week and you should be celebrating even though it was hard you should be celebrating that you made it through the end 
So keep rewarding the progress that will allow you next time to have to feel energetic to not procrastinate anything. Wow. Okay. Next. So what do we get from overcoming procrastination? Simple. Three things you can find so many, but three things that works most of the time. I mean, that we benefit most of the time. It's the peace of mind. You know, you start to feel the strength and purpose and a healthy feeling of being in charge of your life. You feel like, oh, I'm really in charge of this. You know, I'm not being controlled by my emotions. I'm not being distracted by anything. Like, oh, you get that kind of feeling. Like, I am that girl. I am that person. You know, I'm doing it. And number two, um, why procrastinating always makes you feel weak? and useless, I'm telling you, I believe we can relate, and helpless. So taking charge of your life always will make you stronger, competent, and capable, and confident. And you know, when you, you know that you are doing something right in your life, uh, especially coming from the behavior-wise, like you are super organized, uh, super in control of everything that happens in your life. You are not a procrastinator. You are always on time. All those kind of things. It makes you feel strong, and it makes you feel capable and competent to even rock anything else. And then number last, you will experience increased personal freedom because um, when then you come to need to take your phone and go through anything you want to go through social medias you will feel like you have that freedom to do so you won't judge yourself so these are the major best benefits we get from procrastination so let's have a look at the career um at uh, the challenge itself but before we navigate to it can we do our routine reaction just to know that everything is clear okay i'm seeing fenuel everyone else ai okay musa all right radiate rodol failure subtamu thank you so guys and aaron and lilian i can see you guys thank you so much so we are going to be doing a small exercise because this is a behavior actually it's a behavior we should be developing as we are, are joining new workplaces very soon. You do not want your manager to not get anything on time, just be, simply because you procrastinated. You know, you can actually miss the deadline because things are too much. You are loaded and um, like you have valid reasons. But you know, when you are telling yourself that your manager is seeing you negatively just because you procrastinated something super bad so that's why this is a behavior we should be developing as we navigate our new workplaces very soon so the challenge we also repeat the uh what is procrastination and we have uh, an introductory article that you will have to read here is part of the challenge. Just read through the details, you will find out why. And then we have our something that talks about why people procrastinate specifically. So take some time to also read this paragraph. And then inside the mind of a procrastinator, we have to watch this TED talk. It's not very long, and actually, it's it's very fun. It has some humor concepts. Uh, which makes it easier to understand and to even enjoy watching it. So it's a small video. Let's see how long it is. It's 14 minutes. Very interesting video. So I hope you are going to be enjoying watching it. So it, it's, it's from a guy called Tim Arbon, and he's a writer most of the time. So when he was asked to talk about something uh, in this TED talk, he thought of something he's best at, and he said, I'm a good procrastinator, you know? So he shared how has been his journey as a procrastinator and how he has been overcoming it. And he shared also different tips to how you also can do it. So 
aside from the introduction, so let's ensure that we go through the introduction very well so that we can navigate this scenario. So assume you have an important project due in one week and you have known about it for a while, but you keep putting it off. Now, with only two days left, you are feeling overwhelmed and stressed. So reflect on this scenario and consider the following questions. Number one, as Tim shared his story in the TED Talk, write your own procrastination story while at Ten Academy. Trust me, this is not to be negative because we tend to think that procrastination is a negative thing. We do not want uh, this to be a judgment thing. So just write your story freely. We just want to ensure that everyone can recognize that this is a habit that we have once in a lifetime. And if you ever had it, please uh, write your own procrastination story while at Ten Academy. Make sure it's original and it captures the essence of your own experience, your own experience at Ten Academy. So make it yours. And it, we have been here for, Ten, um, for 10 weeks now, technically, yes, 10 weeks. And if there is that time, which I believe actually there is going to be, because as career people, we can see that. We can see that some of different works are done on the very last minute, you know. So uh, even in non-technical things, even in technical things, was it something you had to watch? Was it something uh, just even... Any, anything, just anything, share us your story, you know. And also while sharing your story, pay, emphasize on the following. You have to share us the name of the specific task or challenge you procrastinated on, the name specifically, and then highlight, this is for easy reference, and then highlight particular elements procrastinated in that task or challenge and then how you felt while working on it on the very last minute. And then were the results positive and negative? Actually, the results can be positive or can be negative. They don't have to be negative always. Probably you worked on it on the very last time because you felt like, oh, you were good on the topic and you actually did it on last minute and it worked, you know? So you were true. So that's why we want to understand. It can be positive, it can be negative anything anything the story doesn't have to be negative and it doesn't have just to be positive it can be anything so just share us and then number two i kept adding the word in general because i don't want you to think that i'm referring to team's shared story so in general in your real life what are the underlying reasons or triggers for procrastination is it fear of failure like we said in the a tutorial is it perfectionism is it lack of interest is it feeling overwhelmed or is it something else so provide a list of four reasons why with their detailed explanation a list of four reasons here with their detailed explanation and then number three reflect on the role of distraction on procrastination what external factors or distractions often derail your focus so contributes to procrastination extend we say the role of distractions and they should be external factors and then number four in general list four excuses or justifications you use to rationalize your procrastination if you cannot find four it's all right give out the number you have because this is a personal thing and we cannot assume that everyone has more than two or three reasons um, uh, to three excuses or four excuses they use to rationalize their procrastination. You know, so be honest about the thought of patterns or even beliefs that enable your procrastination habits. And number five, reflect on the past instance of procrastination. So where there are any negative consequences or mixed opportunity, this can be, I have to add in general here as well. It doesn't have to be at an academy. It doesn't have to be about anything written here. So just in general, well, did you ever miss an opportunity or result into negative ex consequences just because of procrastination? And then number six, think about times when you successfully avoided procrastination. So. 
remember the goal of this challenge is not really just to complete the task but to gain insight into your procrastination habits any that are there and then develop strategies for improvement take op take this opportunity to learn more about yourself and how you can better manage your time and responsibilities so when we be grading we want to be grading the right answer because everyone has their own study on all these questions we are just going to be uh grading the formatting the organization did you answer all questions did you share as many uh, as many bullet points as possible did you we just want to hear your stories through this challenge so it's not just a uh, just a task so yeah be yourself and be honest to yourself and uh where you get to even evaluate yourself at the very last minute and you feel like this has allowed you to think about your procrastination and to also think about what you can do better on it so yeah uh this is what we are going to be looking at into rubrics no story is wrong no answer is wrong just ensure that you are answering as it's supposed to be that is it i think i didn't talk about this number six think about times when you successfully avoided procrastination when you successfully avoided it and what strategies did you use you can list also as many strategies as possible. Let this be your work. Use your own words, use your own grammar, use your own everything. Let it be just your reflection work. And we will appreciate to see, uh, yeah, that work. So thank you everyone. Any questions? I can see Fionio said, I love that TED, TED talk. Yes, I also like it big time. So I believe everyone is going to have a good time, you know, watching it. It has humor. Yeah, very, very entertaining. It has too much humor in it. You will enjoy it. So yeah, any questions? Okay. Or oh, you can see it on Google Drive. Um, it should be there. It should be there. It should be there. Um, let me check quickly, Rudolph. You might turn on cut it on. Should give me oh uh, for me I can see it there check under week ten in non technical or careers folder. If you still can see it, then it's access issue, then I can tell voters to look into it. All right, uh, Rodolf, I will follow up with you on that. But I believe everyone else, you can see it. If you can't also let me know so that I can re-upload it. But that is it. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, Rodolph. Yeah, hello, Pascaline. Hello. Yeah. Uh, up to now, I can see it on Google Drive. I check again, oh. but mm -hmm. it's not there for me. Okay, let me let me reach out to Rodas to check that. Okay, I'll be communicating on Slack quickly. Okay, thank you so much, guys. See you in CBS today. We have a cool challenge. So yeah, have a great afternoon.